Yeah. Right, well, good morning, everyone. I do believe we are live now. Um, hopefully, if I turn this correctly, you can see and hear me. See and hear me. So if you can, so if you can, you can see and hear me. If you can see and hear me, just put a comment in the uh, comments. I'll be able to comments, see that. I'll be able to see that. Uh, I'm just um, not too sure if working. Too sure working. Um, so I'll just wait until I can see. Um, so I'll just wait until I can, can see. see me. Can and then I'll see get going. Me. And I'll get going. Oh, nope, no, that's strange. Now I can see we've got 95 people watching. Oh, so, good morning, everyone. Hope everyone's, well. oh, good morning, everyone. um, Hope everyone's doing well. Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. Partly echoing. Partly echoing. That might have fixed it. Jeff and Alice, can you tell me if that's uh... hopefully that's worked anyway? But anyway, today we'll be building the uh, KX057 barn. More people are saying sound low base, so if you bear one second. Right, how does that sound? Is that any better, everyone? Probably not. People are saying their career has gone now. Right, well, I do apologize about the uh, bumpy start. This isn't my forte, as you can probably tell. But today we'll be building the uh, KX057 bar uh, or store kit. Uh, this is a kit that um, Sam Jones from Peaks 47 actually um, helped design. And he did a lot of the prototype work for the fact that that's his building of it there. It's a lovely little kit. It's uh, relatively cheap. It's uh, about uh, I think it's seven pound forty nine, um, and in that kit you get four millimeter. In fact, let me just uh, move my desktop and add in this. Brilliant. I do apologize about all the mess you can see over here. I am an extremely messy modeler. Um, I have, I do not hide that at all. I always like to make a good mess. Anyway, so in the kit you get uh, a selection of four millimeter pieces which makes up the main body uh, you get a blank piece which you can exchange for either door so if you didn't want the larger rolling door or the um, I suppose the side entrance you can just insert that blank piece and then uh, you emit that feature uh, you also get which I have pre-painted for your enjoyment some roof trusses Hold them up to the camera so you can see them. Not sure if they're focusing very well. If you can see the quality of the uh, my shoddy paint job, um, but I, I'm, this kit is actually going on my main layout, so I did want to make a good job of it. So I have pre-painted all of them. Uh, you get a, quite a few of them in the kit. You get a sheet of um, roof tiles, which we'll be adding later on. What else do you get? You get a load of texture wraps. If I just show you this sheet, this is a brick option you get. You also get the stone option. I'm be building a stone option today, but this is what the texture sheet looks like uh, when it comes out of the packet. I have, to save myself a lot of embarrassment in time, pre-cut texture wraps um, for the kit we'll be doing today. Uh, it's an easy job enough, but it just takes a while. It just takes a bit of patience. Um, so I did them last night, speed things up a bit. So this is what a texture sheet looks like out of the box. Uh, you've got two sides, three wall options. Obviously, you only use two. When you get two strips for internal uh, wraps, in case you want to do it with a door open or anything. Um, I will be doing mine with a door open today. So I have pre-cut wraps to go on the inside. Little uh, confession before we start. Um, about two minutes ago, I tried to get my glues ready and the nib from my fine glue applicator broke. So I'll either try and use this, but I don't know how good it would be because it's broken in half. Or we'll have to just be very messy with our glue and use it straight from the bottle, which I don't really want to do. But if we um, can't avoid that, then we'll have to just crack on. Also forgot to uh, mention, you get a third sheet in the pack, uh, which is a 0.8 laser board, 0.8 mil that is, and that's your, uh, your detailing bits like your, um, your sliding barn door, your side entrance, and you've also got some nice little rivet detail there for the door. I hope you can see them all right. 
Okay, so we've got, wow, we've got 212 people in the stream now. Um, if anyone's got any questions, please do feel free to um, ask. Um, I am here to answer everyone's questions. If you've got any, I'll try to answer as many as I can, either about scale model scenery, um, my job in the industry, um, my personal modeling, or indeed anything else you can think of. So any questions, please feel free to um, put them down in the comments and I'll be able to see them. Um, I believe I can see, yeah, I can see comments on both YouTube and Facebook. So it doesn't matter where you're watching. Um, feel free to leave a comment and let's get into it then. Okay, so the first step in the instructions is to actually uh, build the main construction of the kit. So we've got the four sides. Like I said, I'll be using the side door rather than the blank door. Uh, so this is a really handy tool as well. This is the SX002 jig. Um, you can get two in a pack. I think it only cost a couple of quid. And they're perfect for getting right angles. Absolutely perfect. I absolutely love these. They have saved my back many times. So very simple construction for the size. As you can see, it's a simple slot and tab. I'm trying to get it so you can see. There you are. So okay, so Roy uh, Weston's asking about the cost. If you just bear with one second, I do believe the cost is exactly. Yep, it's seven pounds forty nine. So that's the cost of the kit. Back onto there. So the kit, kit costs seven pounds forty nine, and in there you get two texture wraps, uh, the five sides. Obviously, you only use four roof trusses, roof tiles, and the doors. So there's plenty in the kit to keep you going. Okay, so like I said, I have actually ruined uh, my only fine applicator. I only have one. And I spent the last minute trying desperately find a spare, but to no avail, unfortunately. So this could be quite glue heavy and quite uh, not the finest applications, shall we say, but we'll make the best of a bad situation and we'll get going. So that just slots into there nicely. Hold it for a couple of seconds to make sure everything, make sure the glue goes off. I'll hold it in the jig actually, so I don't have to. And it's 90 degrees. I'm gonna try and uh, Make sure you can see everything, but I might occasionally just slip away for a second. Um, like I say, this is not my forte. I'm not normally doing this on a Wednesday morning. This is normally, um, well, Justin's a lot better at this than I am. Okay, so that piece is now gluing in nicely. Just hold it for a second. Glue's not quite gone off yet. And I'll just start on the second half. Just make sure that you've got those pieces right, right way around so when the two halves come together they do make a hole. Yep, so it looks like Ian's just put a nice link into the um, into the Facebook description there. If you can post that around on uh, YouTube and the other Facebook groups, that would be much appreciated. So if you do want this kit, um, or if you're interested in having a better look at it, uh, Ian's just posting the links there now for you, so you can go and have a look on the uh, on our main website. Because as you can see, there is too much glue on there, there's been quite a bit of spillage. That is because my applicator broke about 30 seconds before I went live. I'll have to get on to Justin and try and get some uh, better applicators, because I've completely run out. They are wonderful things, the applicators, but they do not last very long at all. Okay, so that half is now gluing nicely. I'm just going to leave that to dry a second. I'll just try and show you these root crosses again. Uh, so if Peter Reed's asking what glue I'm using, um, I'm not using uh, wood glue or super glue. I'm using, uh, see if I can get the focus in a bit better, uh, Deluxe Materials Superfatic uh, uh, Wood and Laser Cut Kit Glue. Uh, this is brilliant stuff. It's what I it's my glue of choice for all my modeling work. We also have rocket card glue, uh, which is a bit better for things like um, uh, Metcalf kits, you know, the uh, grey board card material, and most of our KX looks like our um, KX001 1930s uh, factory. 
this is the kit, uh, kit glue I would recommend for that sort of thing. But for your general more heavier work, um, like your laser cut kits, I recommend the Super Pratic. It goes off a bit quicker, it's a bit stronger, and for me, it's just a bit better all around. I do have a, a third type of glue, which we recommend. Uh, I can't see it to hand, um, but that is the new um, Rocket Materials uh, laser cut kit glue which comes in a very small bottle um much smaller than the one i've just shown you this one but um it lasts forever you only need an absolutely minuscule amount and it's a bit stronger than this and a bit quicker than this super fatic um some people do prefer it i do like it but the applicator is a pain to keep clean and i will admit on the first time i tried it out i actually ruined the applicator um <laughs> so i need to try and source another one of them uh, in fact, much like I've ruined the applicator for this. Anyway, so two halves are about to become a whole. So I'm just going to uh, run some glue on the insides of the end walls. Oops. And I've just built glue everywhere because I can't use the applicator. Let's try and keep this clean. Nice thing about this kit as well is I mentioned earlier that they have the option of using the um, the side wall, the side door at the back there. Uh, if you do choose to use this, you can either have this on the right or on the left. It's, it works both ways, which I think is a nice feature of this kit. Okay, so that is or should be holding nicely. I'll just put it back in the SX002G to just make sure that. Everything's true and square. I am actually going to try and use this kit on my, um, I say real railway, my, uh, my my real model railway, my personal one. I do want to make it as uh, as neat and tidy as possible. But it's a lovely kit, this. It's one of those ones where if you shake the box too hard, you'll open it and you'll find a build kit for you. That's, I'm going to leave that to the side a second while I um, prepare the wraps. Well, I've already prepared the wraps, but I'm just going to... Uh, uh, show you them so let's look through the comments again uh yeah a lot of people are saying to use yoohoo um i do have some yoohoo it's one of those things where everyone says it's amazing and great but i can never seem to get on with it i can never seem to use it. i've never been happy with the results but then again i've never tried them through apps so that may be why yes i'm just going to lay our textures out now so i've got three internal textures that's these three I'm going to be putting them on the inside. I will do that towards after the outer ones, I think. Um, and the keen eyed among you will have noticed that I am missing a texture. I've got one end wall, but not the second, and I don't know where it's gone. So, if you excuse me a second while I try and find that. And there it is. Crisis averted. So you can see you've got two uh, wall options. You also get one, which is again, with no door in case you uh, uh, want the option with no door. Uh, but you get a larger one, which is for the barn door and you get a small hole, which is for the side entrance door. Yeah, a lot of people are saying that they've used uh, you who gets very stringy. That's exactly the reason why I don't like it, to be honest. Um, that's why I don't use it, especially for expensive models. It's a bit of a pain when you're trying to stick fine buffer beam details on and you end up with your brand new A4 covered in spiders webs. It's not very nice. And then you have to spend the next half an hour cleaning it when you can spend the next half an hour using it. So it's not one for me, but other people do sing and praise it about it. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, have a look at using the wraps now. I am not a keen wrapper <laughs> in any way of sense. I tend not to use them, only because I've not had the chance to use them, though. Um, and my experience is quite limited with them. But as you can see, I'm trying to get this so I can show you. You uh, line it over the edge, and then you've got lots of tabs that you can just fold over. And the best way I recommend to glue these on. Really trusty pretty stick. 
nice and simple. Roll it out all the way, trying to show you, and use the end corner um, and paste it a lot. Try not to get any lumps, and if you get any lumps, try and paste them out. Um, They are easy to use. I've just not had the experience to know how to use them properly. I always prefer to uh, paint things. Our wraps are good, but I do believe that um, with a wrap you get what you're given in a sense, but when you paint things, you can create an effect which is completely uh, unique to your layout, to your whatever mood you were in when you were painting it, that wrap is then exactly done to that. Okay, so I don't want this to dry out because it's the only one I've got, so put the lid back on. Carefully pick it up. I do apologize if this is not the uh, most entertaining thing to watch. We've got 250 people watching still, so it can't be that bad. Try and line the wrap up the top. There's a little notch in the top, I'll try and show you in a second, and um, that notch has been replicated on the wrap, and that is where the roof beams go in. So try and make sure that's all lined up, and then fold the edges over. I have a feeling I've not used enough glue on the edges, so I might have to Go back over, just apply some more. Yeah, Andy was also saying lumps with print sticks, why he don't use, why he doesn't use print stick. It is a, um, a side effect, if you were, of using print stick. Um, but if you can manage to uh, find them out a bit, then you should be okay. So any more questions, please do feel to put them in the chat. I'll do my best to uh, find them and answer them. Uh, but this is a bit of a juggling act at the moment, trying to uh, do this, make sure you can see it and keep an eye on the comments. So I'm not sure if uh, Sam Jones or Ian's watching, but if they are watching and you say any comments that I miss, I'm sure they'll be more than happy to uh, jump on and help. And then also, if you have any, um, Longer depth questions, more serious questions that can't really be answered with a one-way conversation. Um, you can email us, uh, email us at um, help at scale model scenery. Uh, those emails will get through to both myself, Ian and Justin. Uh, so we'll be able to answer any uh, in-depth questions or any questions you have um, through our ticket system there. So that's help at scale model scenery .co .uk. Okay, let's have a look in the chat again. Uh, so Melford Horrocks asks, if I don't normally use wraps, what do I normally use? That's a good question. Um, I actually love painting. I'm not very good at painting, but I much prefer to paint um, items and wrap them. It's a bit harder with stone, um, but I prefer the 3D effect of like laser engraved bricks rather than using brick wraps. Um, so I have a lot of paint sets for every eventuality I might need. Uh, and I'll try it my, excuse me, I like to use them um, instead of wrapping, but in cases like this where you've got the stone texture, it is much quicker to um, use the wrap provided than it is to um, go and source some wills, um, the, their plastic card, which is uh, sort of like an embossed engraved finish. Okay, so that's one end done. I'll try and show you this little, uh, little slot at the top and two on the sides. They do line up with the texture wrap, so you need to try and make sure they're clear because that is where, not them, where are they? Yeah, there. That's where the uh, roof beams go in. Oops. There's a little bit of a delay on my camera, so I'm just trying to make sure you can see them. Yes, that's where they go in, to so try and make sure they're nice and clear. So um, I didn't use enough glue on this wrap, so it's just coming away at the corners a bit. So I'm just going to go back over and quickly make sure that there's enough glue. Obviously, now I'll arrange that from the next application. I could do put a bit more on. 
So Martin's saying, I don't like the uh, plastic fine tips that come with rocket glues. Um, yeah. Yeah, the Metcalf range do a nice little uh, couple of um, glue applicators, a bit more permanent, should we say, than the uh, ones rocket give you. Um, I've never actually had one myself, but I know quite a lot of people like yourself use them. Okay, so we're moving on to the next wrap now. I've already pre cut these out, but they do come in like uh, an A4 sheet of paper, which you will have to release from. Uh, best way to do that is with a nice sharp knife and a steel rule or ruler, just to make sure you get nice clean edges. Don't use scissors. Um, well, I don't use scissors because I've got the cutting skills of a five year old. But with a, a nice sharp ruler, a uh, sharp ruler, a nice sharp knife, metal ruler, you can't go wrong with uh, releasing wraps. Okay, so this is the second end going on. Like I say, I'm not a natural born wrapper, so this is probably taking me longer. It would take my colleagues to do. Well, that's okay, we're all at different stages of our modeling career and then the learning process. We're all better at some things than others. And wrapping is something where a lot of other people seem to be better than it than I am. But hopefully we should show you that with literally no experience, well, hardly any experience with wrapping, you can create uh, really nice effects straight from the box without having to use any third party uh, products or techniques. Uh, There's a plane about to land, so you may be able to hear that second. I do live um, well, about 50 metres from the end of the runway at Robin Hood Airport in Doncaster. Uh, so a 737 is currently on a touch and go practice, so that will be flying around all day. So I do apologise if you can hear that. Uh, so Roy says maybe it would stick better if you sat it flat with a weight. Yeah, that is true, it would. Um, also, I think this stick is not the newest, um, so I think the tackiness has kind of gone on it a bit. But we'll make do with what we've got. I'll just have to keep going over it, unfortunately. And just keep making sure that I've got plenty of glue on there. Got no issue with uh, gluing onto the main body, it's just where the um, the little tabs roll over the edge. That's where it seems to grow up. Okay, so we're nearly getting there with the ends now. Hopefully, you'll be able to see about what I mean by. Um, you don't need to be um, have an amazing skill set and you'll still be able to get a good effect, a good finish with wraps. Because that is exactly what I'm like. Okay, so there's a bit more glue on the edge. Perhaps this is a, uh, this shows me that I probably should have checked that my glue stick was nice and sticky before I started. I have a feeling that if I'd use a brand new Pritt stick, this would have been done much, much quicker. But oh well. We didn't do that, eh? So, has anyone uh, got any new products they've been starting in the new year? I know I've seen a lot of people have um, been purchasing our mini baseboard layouts, uh, mini baseboards to create nice small layouts on, which is great, great to see. And. <laughs> I have just realised I've made a mistake. So earlier I told you that you can have the side door as either a left or a right version. Um, I went for a right version just so that when you look through the main door, you're not immediately looking back out of the kit. Um, as you can see there, that's the effect I wanted, which is all very well and good, but it has meant even though the kit does line up that way with the uh, the, the slot and tabs and you know, does go together that way, it does mean the wrap that Justin's kindly provided, particularly that's where the door is on the wrap, it doesn't actually line up. So the door is somewhere around there. So I'm going to have to uh, 
do some quick linking there to try and recover that. Um, that's not an issue at all. I know how to fix that. So if you bear with one second, if you do make a mistake, I do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the kit over. So it's on its back. This is probably quite hard for you to see. Um, so the wrap is underneath there. You can see the white paper under the door. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my knife. I'm going to press down on the kit where the door is and where the opening is. About four fifths of the way up, and I'm going to make an incision right down the middle of the door. There we go. And I'm going to go from corner, each corner, to the top of the incision. Well, that will mean that the door, there's now two doors on this side, but I can cover that with the spare wraps that have been given. So that means we've got unfortunately two doors, but I can fold that round. So I'm now going to apply a generous amount of glue onto the uh, the end. Uh, could you not use it for the inside? Mel was asking. Yes, I could have done. Uh, could have quite easily done that, but I have already uh, cut wraps for the inside, and the outer edges come with these. Um, I don't know what they call them. You find them on uh, castles, whatever these are called. They come with them. They go over those uh, nodes there, just to uh, make the kit look more rounded when it's finished, so you don't see any bare wood. So I'm going to solder on, and I'm going to try and rectify that mistake later on, and you'll see how I'll do that later on. If you're watching a couple of weeks ago, you'd have noticed I um, I made mistakes there as well. Uh, that's because I'm not the most confident of modelers, and of course, since I'm doing this as a live stream, it would be awkward of me to stop and read the instructions. And I'm a man, so what do instructions? What are instructions really for anyway? Okay, so that's a generous amount of glue under there. I'm actually going to employ the help of the SX002 here just to make sure that. While I'm pressing down on it from above, I keep it straight and level. Okay, so this could be a bit fiddly, so if you excuse the silence a second while I just try and line this up nicely. Okay, so that appears to have gone reasonably well. Now, where I made those incisions, I'm just going to use them to fold them back, like so. And there we go. We've uh, pretty much rectified our little mistake. A happy accident, as a uh, What's his name would say? I can't remember his name now. Painter. Is it Bob Ross? That's what I'm thinking of. Uh, okay, so Mike is saying instead of trying to, to uh, glue a thin bit of wrap with the uh, wide end of the print stick, uh, use a small stiff brush and wipe it off. Yeah, that's a good idea. I suppose that would work quite well. Um, so, another plane's landing, so it might get a bit noisy for a second. Let's wait for that's gone. Yeah, so Mike's saying uh, use a paintbrush to apply the glue, uh, which is a good idea. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I have one to hand, so I'll carry on as I am. But for anyone else wanting to try this, that would be a good idea. Yeah, Colin's saying try and uh, crease the wrap. I'll do that on the next one, actually. I'll see how that goes. I'm just trying to make sure the door looks all fresh. It shouldn't matter because we have actually got um, a laser cut door to go in there and that will hold the whole thing, hold the uh, wraps opening the door. You can see we've got a little, that's where the door should have gone. Uh, the wrap didn't quite line up because I built it the wrong way round. But we can cover that because Justin has very kindly provided a spare sheet of wrap. So I can probably easily cover that. Uh, I'll do that later on though, there's no point uh, watching that at the moment. Just a couple of these little 
tabs is gluing a bit better. It's not quite gone on right. So wind the glue all the way up. Make sure we get a nice covering. Fold them flat. Right, so next we're on to the uh, barn door. Which is this lovely number? So we've got 256 people still watching, which is absolutely brilliant to, uh, to see. So if anyone's got any questions, please do free, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, Morty UK is asking, did I see your comment above? Um, I live on the approach from military airfield in Norfolk, so you can guess the noise of the uh, fast jets. Yep, uh, the Vulcan bomber, well, it still is based at Doncaster, but it used to fly around. And that was a bit bloody noisy. Okay, so I'm just, uh, I can't remember who suggested it, but I'm just pre-folding the wrap around the door now. Big barn door, just to try and make it uh, go a bit better. Hopefully that should work. And I realise I've left the lid off my uh, super so I'm just going to quickly put it on and back off again. Let's stop that drying up. So this is the last exterior wrap and then we've just got a couple of interior ones to do. Uh, I will be building this kit with the, uh, the large barn door open. Uh, so I do need to put some wraps on the inside so it just doesn't look like bare uh, wood. Uh, so Brian's saying, uh, I've seen my jigs before and decided I didn't need one, however I now need one after seeing its use this morning. Yeah, it is a brilliant bit of kit, the uh, SX002. Um, I can't remember how much they cost. Um, in fact, if you just bear with one second, I'll be able to find out for you. So SX002 does not cost the earth at all, costs hardly anything. Let's wait for it to load on my web page and I'll be able to tell you. It's really, really useful bit of kit. It's one of my most used things. Uh, so the SX002 costs £2.50 and that gets you two, two in the kit. So you get a small one and you get a large one. Very, very simple to construct. You'll have them done within five minutes of receiving your parcel. They're really handy as well, just to keep around, um, just in case you need, like now, when I'm gonna be pressing down on top of the building, it's not a bad idea to put it in so it holds it at nice right angles. So in case I put too much force down, it won't uh, warp what we're building in any way. Okay, so I'm just lining the last wrap up now. Do you think this isn't helping? One thing I should mention as well is um, the wood, uh, the wooden, wooden trusses. These were uh, this colour, and they came out of the packet. So it's just a plain laser board material. I've actually painted these. You see that? Try and make it so you can see. I've actually painted them, and they look really pretty realistic. I painted them with this paint set which is the Life Colour Weathered Wood paint set. They do a number of different paint sets, which uh, include things like flesh, brick, stone. Um, they even do rail weathering sets, which I absolutely love. Um, they are really, really handy bits of kit and we can actually stock them. So if anyone's interested in getting their hands on a couple of those really nice paint sets, we can stock them. So if the interest is there, um, if you like them, just send us an email, we can get them in, we can order them in. Um, but they are superb bits of kit, really nice paints, lovely acrylic, a huge range, and highly, highly recommended by me. I use them a lot. But this building, which is the signal box I'm working, uh, try and show you a bit more. That was used with their brick paint set. 
So it shows what you can achieve with them. I'm quite happy with that, quite proud of that. So that looks like the exterior wraps are pretty much all done. All I've got to do now is a handful of interior wraps. And would you believe it, when I was uh, preparing the wraps, I actually made the same mistake as I did on the outside as I did on the inside with the door. I cut the door on the wrong end, which is typical, isn't it? Absolutely typical. Not to worry, I'll just quickly cut another one to try and rub the glue off my hands because they are a bit sticky. So very quickly, just line up the old piece onto the freshie. Trace it. You could see how I cut them now a bit better as well. And maybe I did this on purpose. I can hear another aircraft going to land again. So it could get noisy a second. Yeah, that's a. Uh, it's like a Jet 2 or a Sunny, sunny Airways, is it? A Boeing 737. Doing touch and goes at Doncaster Sheffield Airport, which is rather annoying for us, but we'll uh, keep going. There was an RAF aircraft, um, I think it was a B300, a uh, little twin engine recon aircraft, nothing impressive, but uh, that was flying around earlier, which was quite nice to see. Uh, so, again, with the interior wrap, just folding it over. Now, I can't obviously, I can't really knife on it when it's uh, in this angle. So I'm just going to quickly draw center line. There we go. Okay, so uh, A to say in that you can't do any aircraft. Um, there is, you have to uh, believe it, <laughs> there is one flying around, but it can be quite annoying sometimes. So if you can hear that uh, rumbling sound, that is why. And let's just hope the RAF decides to stay or just decide not to pay a visit today because when they come you know about it especially when it's things like the uh, c-17s which we get there bit. okay so that's the interior wrap done for the inside i'm going to uh, quickly try and do this okay so hi nick welcome to the uh, live stream hope you uh, you and your granddaughter are enjoying it we're just building the uh, kx057 barn it's going really well actually. Uh, it's looking really good. So I'm just finishing off the interior wraps now. It's taken a bit of a while, but oh well. Let's just insert that in the center. Now, I'll quickly, I've uh, just uh, cut too much out from the inside of the door. So I'm just going to quickly try and cut that away. So we don't need it anymore. So like I say, wraps aren't my strong point. But if there's enough time at the end, I'll show you uh, probably something like painting the door. Um, that will take quite a while though, so it will have to be, uh, if it's requested, I'll show you how to how paint the doors. I'm just trying to trim off the interior wraps a bit because I've just made them a bit too big. Okay, there we go. That's the door done, or the inside done. Yeah, Robin's saying modelling and plane spotting is his idea of heaven. Yep, that is true. I do get distracted quite a lot at work. Don't tell Justin when big planes come and land. Um, I am, I suppose, a keen aviation enthusiast. 
Uh, I do like my air shows. I do like my aircraft. So it's always nice when they come and say hello, especially the helicopters. I'm a real big fan of the, the uh, Chinooks. So just the inside walls now. If you can hear snoring as well, I do apologize about that, but my uh, my fabled Russell has decided to join us and is currently asleep on the bed just to my right. So if you can hear snoring, it's not me. <laughs> I do apologize. I do promise it's my uh, Jack Russell. He will probably want to go out for a wee in a bit, so if I have to get up and let him out, that'll be why. So Adrian's saying he wants, to, uh, or Aid is saying he wants to see me paint the doors. I will. I'll, I'll see if I can have time again. Um, it could be a long process. Also, if you want to see how I painted these, I'm going to uh, try and get it so you can see a bit. Um, I was going to show you how I did one live, but one of the layers of paint I used was actually this, which is the Ammo Mig oil brusher. That's an oil paint, so that takes about 20 hours to actually dry properly. So I didn't really want to use that live um, for that reason. It would have just taken too long to dry. Okay, so this is the last wrap in. I'm not wrapping the, uh, yeah. the side where the big barn door is, um, simply because you won't see it. Um, I'm having the barn door open, so you'll be able to see the back there. I'll be having that door closed, so you won't see the uh, the inner back, shall we say? You'll not see that end. So Roger's saying he used to fly the uh, the Havilland Chipmunk. Uh, that's uh, I've never actually seen the aircraft fly. I don't think. Um, I'm not sure if there's any flying examples left. But, um, I've spent many, 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 many hours flying in you know, a grub tutors um, during my time in the air cadets, which was absolutely amazing. I've also flown in uh, Chinooks uh, at the RAF Odium, which was an amazing experience. Absolutely loved that. Okay, so we can see, albeit a bit roughly, um, due to my lack of experience and patience, that the barn has now been wrapped and now looks like half a barn. Which looks pretty, pretty smart. Ask me, it's just couple of areas where I could do a bit more glue but if it comes to it I'll just touch them up later as we go along. So next is going to be the fun bit about the uh, fine applicator and that is gluing in the trusses. Now they just, again try and get the sock and show you, they just slot in quite nicely although the wraps can make it a bit difficult because of course the wraps have made the holes a bit smaller. Yep, so they sit in like that. They could do a couple, they could do with a, a bit of glue on there. I'll quickly try and do that, but like I say, I haven't actually got my uh, fire applicator with me today because it broke about 20 minutes, well, a couple of, oops, a couple of minutes before I went live, and I haven't got a spare, which is always nice. So I could be a bit heavy on the glue here, but I'll try my best. Just tiny, tiny, tiny blobs. Yes, that's probably too much. And that's the right amount. So I'm just going to try and dab most of that off. There we go. So, again, there's a little uh, sort of notch in the top and sides of these wooden trusses. I'll show you on this one. Easy to see here. There you go, got two little notches, one there, one there, and one at the top. Uh, you need to make sure they all align properly because we will be putting in uh, like a roof beam, uh, which will line up for everything. So I've got, I've got anywhere, I've got, uh, I've got 247 people watching now, which is absolutely great. And if anyone's got any questions, either about the industry, the company, my role in the company, uh, oops, or indeed, anyone else as well in the company or anything else to do with modeling be it my real model railway or anything like that please do feel free to ask and i'll do my best to help out okay so these wraps are getting a bit in the way now because they've made the holes a bit smaller 
I did test run this yesterday and it was much easier without than the wrap point there. Also the oil paint that I used last night to paint these hasn't fully dried, so I'm getting a bit messy at the moment. Oops. And that one's broken. Okay, so we've just learnt not to press down too hard. That's okay, because we'll do it as a devilix version now, shall we? So there you are, you've learnt first hand. There you are, learnt first hand not to push down too hard when inserting the roof trusses. <laughs> Someone's asked if we're making a bandstand. Uh, Justin's had a bandstand on and off working on it for about two years now. Um, so I suppose the answer is yes, but not today. It's coming. It's in the process of being developed. But I think it's uh, one of those little bugbears, that bandstand. It'll be ready once it's ready. You've all got those little projects. I'm working on um, a model of Roberts Road, which is a big uh, shed AMD in Doncaster. That's taking a while to develop. Okay, so I'm just a bit cautious about breaking this one. Now I'm trying to get it in without it uh, breaking. Which is proving harder than I'd said, but I think that's pretty much it. It's not in properly or fully. But hopefully that works. Perils of live modelling. Yeah, it's uh, not the easiest. Normally, if we were doing this for an article, if we did something like that, you wouldn't see it. Um, but now you can see we are human. We do make mistakes. One of my mistakes as well was painting these in an oil paint last night because I've not had enough time to dry. And now my fingers are very dirty. Might be worth trying to make these a little, little bit bigger. There we go, that one went in a bit better. The uh, little slots. Yeah, <laughs> I can see Sandra is saying that, um, giving it a nice derelict effect. Yeah, we've had one broken. We've had one break, you can see it in the middle, third up. It's broken a bit. But oh well. I suppose my layout's set quite uh, late in the 50s. So. This barn would be quite old by the time the layout set, so if something is a bit broken, then that is only natural, I suppose. So that, some of these do go in a bit better than the others. Uh, it all depends on how much wrap is fouling for slot, which is a sentence I never thought I'd say, to be honest. Okay, so Mike is saying that you can make your own applicators with syringe needles. Um, yeah, that is very, very possible. I imagine that the uh, the rocket applicator isn't much different. It's just a very fine plastic tube, which gets clogged up extremely easy, which is very annoying. But oh uh, well, I'll have to live with that. And our good old friend, the 737's back. So if you can hear that for one minute, that's why. I wonder if they get dizzy flying around all day. Maybe we should fly in the opposite direction to stop them getting so dizzy. Yeah, this is not easy without the uh, fine applicator. I really wish I had one. Probably would have done this by now if I did, but that one went in much easier. So uh, it's not every uh, it's not every roof truss which is having an issue. It's just a couple where the wraps have been a bit enthusiastic over the edge. Okay, so last one. And there we go. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half successful roof trusses. I say a half because one broke. All painted up, all weathered nicely.
So yeah, that looks pretty good. Fingers are a bit dirty, and that's because the oil paint that I've been using hasn't dried. So I'll just quickly try and uh, wash that. Let's have a little drink. Okie doke. So I'll just confirm the instruction and see which is the next part it suggests. So now it suggests the, uh, the roof tiles. So if we get the big sheet out, which is this one, nice papery, wobbly laser cut kit. So we're going to start from the top, I believe, and release one of the uh, Roof tile strips. Probably should have done this yesterday when I was preparing off camera, but oh well. Don't take me long. Just release the nodes and hold it in. There we go. That should be. One line of roof tiles. It's a bit still in the corner there. Just help on its way. There we go. So Steve's asking uh, if you break roof trusses, are there spares available? Uh, yes, there will be. Um, I can't tell you off the top of my head um, how it would work in uh, a way, but I imagine we'll be very willing to provide you with spares should you need it. So I'm just measuring how many I need because obviously you get the strip that you actually cut loose from the screw is longer than the builder you need. So just measure off how many you need and get to there. Cut them three. Yep, spares are usually available for every kit. Um, it normally obviously depends on what kit you've got there as to if there's any costs involved or anything like that. So they just line up nicely. So I'll quickly give could be fun about the applicator. Put a very fine bead of glue. It's probably way too much. But like I say, I don't have the applicator, so and there we go. That's the first strip done. I was going to try and get show you properly. Thank you, Mike. You are very, very, very correct there. And I'm very glad that you pointed that out to me. I have forgotten the horizontal roof beams. Thank you, Mike. If you watched my live stream a couple of weeks ago when I did the, uh, the local maintenance platform, I did make a couple of errors there as well. Just goes to show that we're all human and we all make mistakes. So there we go, that's my roof trust. I have to make sure I get this the right way around. Hopefully this fits as well because uh, my roof beams haven't been lined up the best. Um, through my error, of course. I'm not going to glue these in, um, just to be quite frank, I don't think it really needs it. Oops. That's another roof just broke. Oh well, we'll say a tree fell through the roof at some point. Need to get a pair of pliers to pull it out.
Yeah, Brian's saying that his mistakes would fill a book. Yeah. Um, mine would make an atlas, Brian. Maybe a whole series of books. Okay, so I'm just going to try and I need to make sure that it's actually lined up with the uh, roof beams a bit better. But that one doesn't seem to want to go. Nor him. Which is fine. Just means that the roof may not be entirely, uh, what do you call it, level. In fact, I might actually choose to omit these for that reason. Nope, we've got it to go in. Albeit. Yeah, I'm going to choose to admit those. It's not anything to do with the uh, kit, it's just simply to do with how I built it. Uh, it just doesn't seem to align 100% on the roof, and I would rather have the uh, tiles neat rather than the roof realistic, if that makes sense. So I'm going to do a cho uh, choose to admit those for the sake of building. Okay, doke. So the next line of tiles is going on. Of course, you need to remember that you need to oscillate these uh, to give them a good finish. Get my glue. I'm going to apply it onto here. Probably way too much, but I haven't got the fine applicator. So I'm going to use bit of tissue. To just step that down again. Uh, has the oil affected the trusses? It only has affected them in the way that the oil hasn't dried properly. Um, you should really leave them to dry for a, a, a couple of days, really, because um, they are still wet when I tried to apply them, which caused me that my fingers got covered in oil. Uh, but it hasn't affected how they built, no. So I used, the method I used was um, apply a very, very, very fine coat uh, almost like a wash at the end of, how, of when I painted them and then I actually removed most of it with a dry brush um, which sort of stained it a bit but didn't uh, leave any marks or anything uh, well obviously it left marks but it didn't um, cover it entirely so they, they still could, you still could see uh, the paint on the other side Is giving it a lovely road effect. It's the same method I use for my sleepers on the model railway. So, I've still got 216 people watching, which is great news. So, if anyone's got any questions, uh, do feel free to ask and I'll uh, do my best to help out. Likewise, if you've got any uh, more pressing issues, you can email them to us at help at scalemodelscenery.co.uk. And then myself and Ian will be able to get back to you then and uh, we'll help you out. Okay, so the next strip of root tiles going on. Now, of course, if you were so desired, you can cut these up, uh, cut these, make these look um, broken, uh, which gives it a really nice effect. So, of course, they're not all meant to be perfect. 
roof tiles do break in real life. So I'm just trimming it now. What I might do for time, since this is a very uh, drawn out process of the, of the build, just adding the roof tiles, is I might do one side and then I'll leave the other side open and then I'll make a start with doors. Because um, I don't want people to be you know, wanting to see things like the doors go on and end up just watching me put on all of these. Uh, roof tiles for a couple of hours. Okay, so thanks for joining us, Brian. Um, anytime. And also, if anyone wants to see how we, um, or if anyone wants to see a certain kit be built in these live streams, do let us know. We'll um, definitely have a look at doing them. We've got probably about 400 kits to make our way through, so if you are, if you're wanting to see anything in particular, please do feel free to ask. And I'm sure we'll be more than happy to get something done for you. Okay, so I'm just releasing the next line of tiles. You can get two uh, strips on one strip of tile in the kit. So it doesn't take that long really, it's just a bit tedious. So please ask in have I got a layout. Um, I will try and show you if you're interested. I can do this without making a mess of myself. Yes, is the answer. I have two six foot by one foot boards which join together at either end. You can see you've got the uh, catches there. Um, it's a layout based on a fictional station on the Esk Valley Railway, which is Middlesbrough to uh, Whitby Railway. Um, it's a line I'm absolutely obsessed with. Um, I'm just building a very small uh, section of that in a fictional setting. Um, yes, yeah, so and Roger's saying I could use a cocktail stick or something to uh, apply the glue a bit finer. Indeed you can, it's a very good idea. Um, and without leaving the chat or leaving the room for a while to go and source something, that could be an issue. Um, because I don't have anything to hand, I don't think, but I'll just quickly do this and then I'll have a better look. So, does everyone want to uh, see me do the whole roof, or are you okay me just doing half the roof? Because as you can see, I'll try and show you there. It's a tedious process, and then of course, once going all the way up, I need to go around the edges, making the edges a bit better. Uh, yeah, my saying, um, Here's one. Have a here's one I built earlier uh, to speed things up a bit. That is a very good idea. Uh, I'll be brutally honest with you. This was a very um, last minute thing. Uh, me and Justin only realised on Monday night, Monday afternoon, I think it was. Um, that's we didn't have anything planned, and Justin's uh, off today, uh, so he asked me if I could quickly do this for him. Of course, I said yes, but that meant he had to quickly curry up a kit for me to build, which was this one. Um, so I've not had time to really do much uh, work on the layout. Oh, uh, sorry, work on another kit apart from just do the basic preparation work. Um, so yeah, Roger Dixon saying good choice of location for the layout. It's an amazing choice of location, if you ask me. Um, the Esquire line, if you don't know it, is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous line. Um, goes from Middlesbrough to Whitby, and this scenery is unreal. Stations are pretty amazing as well. Um, it's single line running for most of the way, so there's lots of nice passing points, lots of nice in, uh, variation in the um, scenery and lots of nice stations as well. If you're following us on Facebook, you would have seen that a couple of weeks ago, we, we released a station hut. That was based off the one at Robin Hood's Bay, um, which isn't on the uh, S Valley Railway. That's actually on the uh, Scarborough to Whitby Railway. Um, but it's obviously same sort of design. 
data is the esque valley. But it was a good choice because I'm very interested. I've got lots and lots of research books on the uh, esque valley, obviously from all over. So a lot of the kits I'm designing are actually um, take a lot of their influence from that. Okay, so I've nearly done the first half. I've seen a few comments saying um, build half the route, just speed things up a bit. Um, yeah, I agree with you, to be honest, this could take a while. So I'm just going to be doing half just to make things easier when I get onto the doors. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I'll have time to paint the doors because the way I do it takes, takes a bit of a while, but I'll show you my process anyway. Also show you a trick on how to make the doors a bit more varied. Our friend um, at Tunnel Lane Models, uh, Dan Everson, has built this kit to a much, much, much higher standard than I ever could. Um, and he's done an amazing job. He's turned it into a, like an industrial workshop. Um, he's added things like large boards to the roof just to make, give it a, a more workshoppy feel to it rather than a countryside barn. Um, but he's done a really good job. So if you want to go and have a look at that, uh, I'm not sure where it'll be on his Facebook page, um, which is uh, Tunnel Lane Models, but he has recently done, I'll say, well, fairly recently done this kit, like I say, to a much higher standard than I ever could. So I've got 190 people watching, which is absolutely amazing. I'm surprised that many of you can survive my waffle for so long. But if anyone's got any questions about what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, um, any new kits you've got ideas for, we can discuss them here if you'd want, um, or any kits in development that you want to see, or any suggestions for current products or current um, ways to expand the range. I'm more than happy to answer those questions in this chat now. Any more questions about model railway as well? It's a, a DCC system. I use the uh, Digitrax DCS210 controller, which is a, a really, really nice controller if you ask me. It's very capable, but then also it's simple to use and provides an analog sort of feel to it as well, um, since it's knobs rather than uh, like sliders, like the uh, Dynalysis, there's a lot more analog feel to it, even though it is a digital controller, obviously. But yeah, in future, I will try and make time to get his one a bit earlier in different stages, but like I say, this is a bit of a last minute thing, and Justin realised he wasn't going to be here today. So. In future, I will try and make sure I've got more built up in more advanced stages than this. Just so I can show you what it should look like towards in different stages rather than doing it all the way through. I guess it looks like Jonathan's got a question of a DCS210 and someone's asking, is that a single malt in the background? And the answer is, yes, it's a very nice one too. Uh, ben Morgany, I don't speak Scottish. Ian, who is a more whiskey fan than I am, is probably uh, screaming at me for pronouncing that wrong. But I got it from uh, for Christmas from my in-laws. It's a very nice one. I do like my whiskey. So if anyone uh, is wanting to get us a Christmas present this Christmas, <laughs> whiskey is on my list. Okay, so Roger's asking a quick tip for your viewers. Uh, I've just put my wireless headphones on. Uh, it means I can make my... Uh... Yep, yeah, that's a great idea. If you are listening to this, put in some earphones and then you won't annoy your neighbours with the sound of another airplane landing. Which I'm going to presume. Yeah, that's a sun wing, I believe it is. Uh, Boeing 737. It's a very pretty livery though, that thing. It's a very really nice looking aircraft. Uh, 
Uh, so Aid's asking, what do I design in Corel with SolidWorks? Maybe uh, I'm not too sure what you're referring to there with SolidWorks. Um, if you could just expand on that for us, I'll be able to see where uh, it might be a bit better. Looks like waiting for a question about the. Uh... Yeah, so Jonathan uses DCS210 as well as me. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to show you the control if it'll stretch that far. That's about as far as it goes, but as you can see, it's got lots of buttons, but you've got some nice uh, uh, twiddly knobs at the top. So it's a, it's a nice um, resisted analog feel to the controller. Um, even though it is digital, I do like it for that reason. It's not overly complex and computerized because I do think with us in the modern um, era now, um, I mean, I'm doing this live stream on my phone, on my laptop, and then I'll go back to work. After this, I'll go to work on my laptop, uh, done at five o'clock, and then go and play on the Xbox. So I do feel like uh, technology has too much, um, it's too much presence in our life at the moment. So I do like the analog feel to my controllers, simply for that reason, as I want to get away from staring at computers all the time. Um, but then the advantage of digital means I will never ever go back to analog, I don't think. I just enjoy my DCC sound too much. So uh, Rennie's going to fry fish now, fish and chips. Um, good luck. <laughs> Um, I'm not a particular fish fan, so that doesn't appeal to me, but I'm certain you'll be able to brew up a cracking lunch. Yeah, I wish I had one to show you, like here's one I made earlier. I make lots of um, puns and jokes about having one to show you about. My dog, Teddy, has just decided he's had enough, so I'm just going to let him out. Bear with one second. Even the dog's had enough of my wobble, uh, waffle. To be honest with you, I can't blame him. Uh, Jonathan says he has the uh, DT602. I'm not sure which one that is entirely, but I know the uh, Digitrax range is very, very, very extensive. Um, they have lots and lots of their nice controllers. What I like about the Digitrax system as well is it's so expandable um you can get the basic stuff basic kit and then just expand on it to your heart's content and add in red units and add um other gubbins to make it suit your needs okay so uh pc is asking or peter's asking are there no cross beams in the kit there are cross beams in the kit um, but unfortunately, I kind of this is the first time I've actually seen one of these kits, and I kind of rushed into it, uh, which meant that I didn't align the roof beams properly. So the roof, so the roof trusses properly, which means that the roof beams didn't fit. So I thought rather than risk breaking more, I would just admit them from the kit and have done with it. I will finish the back in my own time. Um, but as you can see, you can't really see the roof from the inside of the kit. So I'm not too worried about that. But as you can see now, the roof's all nicely done. <laughs> We're just saying, good job, I don't have any toddlers in the room. You say that, but um, I'm still as messy as a toddler. And uh, I do have the cutting skills of one. So there may as well be in the end. Okay, so uh, Mel is going to take the dogs out. Uh, thank you for joining us, Mel. Um, enjoy your legally permitted walk. <laughs> okay, so the next step I'm going to suggest is move on to the doors. Now, I want to show you something which Dan has done really well in this kit. I'm going to show you it on the small door and the large door. Um, let's try and position this in a way you can see. What I'm going to do with my trusty Swan and Morton blade. I'm going to cut the corner off 
of the door. In fact, I'm going to release it first, that might make it easier so I'm not cutting through the sprue as well, making it harder for myself. So I'm just going to release the door quickly. Watch the fingers. Okay, so I've released the door. Quick file to get rid of the, uh, the edges. Oops, and very quick file. I always recommend you file your edges down before you uh, so just to get, just get rid of the nasty um, parts of the sprue that are left over, as you would with any kit, any Airfix kit or anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut away the edge of the door, and on one of the roof, uh, one of the beams, I'm just going to cut up slightly from the bottom. and carefully attempt to cut away a millimetre-ish of the door. Another plane landing, so I do apologize about the sound. This is also quite hard to do. Well, it's not hard to do, but it's just a bit tedious since this isn't Freedom to the bash of the kit rather than a step in the kit, so it hasn't been made overly easy. So I'll just try and cut away a bit, and that will do. I'm also going to take my knife and go to run it across the bottom edges. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this, to be honest. But it just makes the door look like it's been there for 40 years. It's not been taken great care of, and mice have chewed away at the bottom. Um, it's broken, it's been mouldy, it's rotted away a bit. So I'm just going to try and add a bit more depth into the kit. So, just a question to everyone watching then, what would you like to see us build next week? What's on your list that you'd like to watch us do? Um, we have literally about 400 kits to work our way through, so if you, if you want to see anything done next week, let us know. And either myself, Justin, or maybe someone like uh, Sam will do that next week. Okay, so the door frame, I'm just trying to release that now. The pub. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. Um, the only issue on that is it's one of our more in-depth kits. Um, it's a pretty big build. Um, you saw how long it took me to do the wraps earlier on. Um, and there's only six or seven wraps for this kit, um, but on the pub kit, there's a good load of wraps to do. Um, if you want to see, a, we have already got a run through on the building of the kit, of that kit. Uh, that's on our club, which is railroadmodelers.com. Uh, you, you don't need to be a paid member to view the article. Um, you can just go on there for free and have a look at it. Um, but we have already done a run through of that kit, uh, which is available there. And that's what Ian made um, recent, well, fairly recently anyway. So I'm just trying to add a minuscule amount of glue to the uh, surround of the door, the door frame. But that's harder said than done. when I don't have the fine applicator. If you missed the start, my applicator broke about 30 seconds before I went live and I haven't got a spare. <laughs> I think, well, Justin's just logged on, so um, I'll show him the progress we've made so far. Um, I asked 
what everyone thought about us carrying on with the other side of the roof, but most people said that uh, it's uh, taking too long for them. Um, so I'm making the start on the doors now. But um, yeah, it's looking good. It's a lovely kit. Okay, so I'm just gluing the door frame onto the door now. Uh, so we've got Bob's going off again. I hope you enjoyed the live stream, Bob. And hope to see you next week. So, another question for everyone. What do we model? My um, modelling of flavour, I suppose you could say, is a British Northeastern Railway, British Railway era, so uh, like 50 years onwards, really. Um, I do model LNER Steam as well. Um, I do model the East Coast Main Line when I can, but at the moment I'm just doing Northeastern Railway uh, branch line, as I showed you earlier. Okay, so that door is ready to glue in now. Got to try and slot it in. It's a bit tight, but that's only because the wraps are in there as well. If anyone likes to see me uh, paint the door, then that is. On the cards, I can do that. I've got a nice shade of uh, Northeastern Railway blue that I can paint the door in, which will go nicely with a couple of the kits. So I've just slotted the door in there. It's quite a tight fit, so I don't need an overly amount, heavy amount of glue. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, go in from the back. Just add a bit of the back just to hold, just tack it in place almost. So that's one, one, one door done. As you can see there. So Jonathan models uh, London Northwestern Railway in own gauge, which sounds like quite a feat. Um, I can't remember who it is now, but the chap who does is it low low Mac models, low low Mac models, I believe it is. Um, he does LMS London Northwestern Railway, I think, in uh, O gauge, um, and that's mighty impressive. That's really really cracking how he's done there. Um, I'd love to do O gauge, and I have had O gauge models in the past. I do think they look a lot more impressive than the double counterparts but the, what they, they don't offer what i want unfortunately in ready to run and i haven't got the skills or the budget to do a lot of kit building um but if anyone ever did a ready to run b1 not the um hassens a3s and a4s because they're quite frank not very good models so i'm going to ignore them i don't think i'll ever really own one Apparently they can't pull the uh, skin of the rice pudding, which for an O gauge model, when you're wanting it to pull 12, 13 metal coaches, it's, that's no good, is it? Okay, so I'm just working on the barn door now. There's quite a few layer, layered components to this, so it could take a second or two just to release everything. Uh, we're just asking, do I also make airfix kits? Um, no, but I make these white metal kits. Uh, this is a uh, Northeastern Railway. Um, I can't remember what diagram wagon it is, but it's a uh, Wizard Models 51L. And excuse me, your plane's landing again. That's the uh, your fable Boeing 727, uh, 737, sorry. Uh, doing his touch and goes, which is rather annoying. But yeah, as I can see, lots of kit built wagons is my sort of thing. I don't get on with plastic kits. Um, most of mine end up in the bin, to be honest. Uh, that's, that's any plastic kit as well. That's uh, railways, wagons. Um, for some reason, I just can't seem to get it. The issue with me with them is the, um, what do you call it? The, I uh, can't get the um, bearings in. Can't seem to ever get bearings properly in the plastic kits, um, so I don't really tend to bother. Okay, so the first part of the door is now out. By the looks of it, let's do a fine detail of this. And it's not wanting to play, it's one little. There we go, it's out. Yeah, Metcalf has stopped doing O-Gauge kits, unfortunately. 
which is a real shame because I reckon there's a big market there. So if you're listening, Justin, <laughs> maybe we should look at doing some more error gauge. Right, so that's the first part of the door frame on. Also need to glue it. Uh, again, this could be a bit tricky without a fine applicator and I haven't got anything that can do, so to speak. Um, so I'm going to solder on without, in fact, what I might do, I'm going to apply a blob there. I've just got a resin sprue from an icing glass models kit I was building for Christmas, which I've had lying around because I'm messy. So I'm just going to use that to gently apply it. There we go. So Ivan seems to like the sound of um, some more over gauge kits from us. So I'll uh, have to put it to the boss and see what he, what his two cents on that is. The problem is with scaling kits up and down, it's a relatively quick job to do on our design software, but we have to factor in the size of the overall kit and the material. So for example, this kit is four mil thick, um, which is the thickest material we have. So if we scale that up to O gauge, we well, it will have to still be out of four mil thick material, which people might think is underscaled. That's not because we don't want to do it in anything thicker. That's because that's all we have, unfortunately. Um, so we can't factor it. And that works for the opposite way as well for any gauge. So if we had a kit that was out of 0.8 millimeter or 0.4 millimeter material, we can't always do it, unfortunately, because we don't have anything smaller. And a lot of details, like these rivet strips I'm cutting out now, simply aren't possible to do in Engage. We can cut them, but you might not be able to build them. That's not saying, you know, Engage models aren't good, but that's just saying that <laughs> even I'm struggling with this double gauge version. So the Engage one is going to be really, really, really fiddly. Okay, so I'm just putting out the rivet strips now, which go over the doors. Now oh, even these tiny details are finding it a bit cumbersome to release them. It might mean my mouth's a bit too thick for the job, but I don't have anything smaller. So that, there we go. Two rivet strips, I'll just double check the instructions to see where they go. Each end of the runners. Okay, so I'll get my resin sprue from my icing glass kit. Just put a little, little dab there and there, a little dab there and there. And find my tweezers. So I've still got 160 people watching, which is brilliant news. Um, I know I probably sound like a broken record at the moment. If anyone's got any questions, Throw them at me. Let's have a nice little discussion going on. You can tell me about what you've been doing as well, of course, if you want to show what you've been doing. Obviously, I can't see it on the live stream, but you can talk me through what you've been doing. Okay, so this might be a bit hard for you to see. I'll try and show you. I do apologize, it's not probably the best entertainment. Um, but I've just added that little rivet strip there. I've got a second one to do on the opposite end. Uh, so let's have a look at the, uh, as on the label, at the bottom of the top right. Uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to there, Phil. Um, if you could expand, expand further, I'll, uh, and some more. So what is asking, uh, would you like a north ratio kit? Uh, I don't know ratio did for locomotives there, Roger. I thought we only did um, wagons, to be honest. But yeah, I would be interested in that. Um, 
the only reason why I don't like plastic kits is because I can't build them. And the only reason why I can't build them is because I don't buy them because I can't build them. So it's a bit of an endless cycle, I suppose. I'm going to have to uh, own up one day sooner or later, get a few in and get them built. Okay, so the next rivet strips on nicely. Oops. And it's off nicely. <laughs> a little bit fiddly just to get into place. Okay, very fiddly to get into place. I always find if something's not going, don't force it, pull out and attack from a different angle. Okay, hopefully the glue that I've put on is still nice and tacky. Okay. So are my fingers, which isn't making this very easy. It will go. And there we go. That appears to be on nicely. Let's press it down a bit. There we go. Bit of a bugger to do, but there's the second rivet strip. Uh, David uh, Chandler asks, uh, what glue would you use for sticking coal down for a coal mine? If it's real coal, um, so if you had like a coal stave or something on your layout, I would put a bit of PVA over the surface where you want to glue it on, pour your coal over the top, soak it with like an isopropyl alcohol, um, which sort of pre-wets it and stop it moving around, and then I would wet it with um, a mix of coal, uh, coal, a mix of water and uh, PVA uh, with a hint of washing up liquid as well just to break the surface tension uh, which would hopefully mean that things don't move around. That's what I do for the tenders of my locos anyway. Okay so just looking at the instructions we're now onto the uh, assembly of the main door. Uh, just read the instructions. Okay, so it looks like we've got just a little strip to glue on top of the door now. That's a sliding door. There we go. Fingers are really tacky, you should probably go and wash them, but no oh well. It's all the oil paint that's come off, so I didn't leave the trusses long enough to dry. But we'll live. Worst things happened at sea. Let's try and figure out which half of the door this goes in. I believe it's the top. Door check the instructions. Nope, it's the second one down by the looks of it. I'll glue that on now actually, and then I'll be able to uh, make it be easier for me. So I boy does not keep my eyes on the chat, probably as much as I should. Okay, so I think it's Pete is asking me some coins uh, for some real cottages. Uh, it's something we offer. We do an extensive range of coins. I'm not sure on the product number, but if Justin, Ian, or Sam's watching, I'm sure they'll uh, be able to uh, uh, get it done for you. Find out which. There we go. So that's the door on nicely. So yeah, if you uh, go onto our website and type in coin, uh, hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, you'll be able to see our full range of them there. So just releasing the door now. The laser board material is actually surprisingly tough. It's nice and thick. Just means it takes 
good second or two to release. Making sure you cut through all the little uh, nodes correctly. No matter how thorough you are, you will always miss one or two. There we go. There's the one I've missed. There's one there. One there. Uh, so he's asking that he wants them for window frames. Uh, I do believe we do them for window frames. Um, if not, send us an email, help at scalemodelsteam.co.uk with any pictures and draw dimensions you have. And we can seriously look at doing them, adding them into range. I can't remember off the top of my head whether we um, we do them or not. I'm pretty certain we do, um, but if we don't, we certainly can. So uh, send us a message with any drawings you might have and we'll look at doing them for you. So what I'm doing now is just replicating what I did on the side access door, and that's just roughing up the bottom of this sliding door, just to make it a bit more varied. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut away at a small section of the door to make it look like the rats chewed through it or the moulds got to it. Make it look a bit more varied. Um, I don't think I'll be able to uh, build uh, paint this door, unfortunately. I don't think I've really got time. But if anyone is interested, I will paint it up in my own time, document it, and I will add it to our Facebook group, which is realmodelers.com to be able to see how I've done that. So if you'd like to see that, let us know. So I'm just going to add a bit more variation to the door and a few more cuts. Make it look like it's been through the walls a bit. Make it look like it's taken the full force of the uh, North Yorkshire Moors weather. Cut that bit out. And I do apologize, you can't really see what I'm doing very well. But I'm nearly there and then I'll come show you. And there we go. That looks all right to me. You can spend all day doing that if you really wanted to. There we go. So you can see, I've just roughed up the bottom of the door a bit, make it look a bit weathered. Obviously, I'll then go paint that um, in a nice northeastern railway blue, which is that colour, which is Citadel. So what, these Citadel paints are really good, but. <laughs> The names I give are a bit stupid. This is Bah Bahorath Bahorath Blue. <laughs> Make of that what you will. It's a nice colour though. That's all I care about. It's a lovely colour. Okay, so Tom's leaving now. Thanks for joining us, Tom. Uh, I'm glad you could make it. Okay, so I want the door to be pretty much open, but not fully open. So I'm just positioning where I want it on the kit. Obviously, if you had it closed, you'd glue it on in the corner there. If you wanted it fully open, you'd have it there. But I want it ajar, I suppose the term would be. I want it to be open enough so you can peer in and look at the workbenches inside. Um, <laughs> what I say is probably chewed up by a Jack Russell. No, my Jack Russell, it definitely would have been chewed up. He's eight now, bless him, but um, he acts like a puppy, which is amazing, but he's a feisty character. That is the term. Okay, so I'm just adding a nice layer of glue. I don't want to add too much because I'm gluing this onto the wrap. Um, and of course, if you use a wet glue onto paper, it can saturate it and ruin the wrap. Not that would really matter because my wrapping isn't the best. Um, what I might actually do is I might um, see if Justin will let me. Uh, is I might get another one of these kits, build it without any wraps, and then try and have a go at using paints and other materials um, to get it looking uh, different. Not better, not worse, but different. I think for now. I think that'll mean. Okay, so that's the barn door. 
glued on nicely. I'll try and show you that better. Okay, so welcome to the part here at Dimbore Junction. Glad you could join us and apologize if you can't see anything. It feels like patting your head, rubbing your belly, walking in a straight line and saying the alphabet backwards, trying to get lined up with the camera. We can see there, you can see a nice little uh, variation in detail I put at the bottom. The notches cut out of the uh, of the bottom of the door. Uh, that was a brilliant idea by Dan Everson at Tunnel Lane Models. I really highly recommend you um, you go and have a look at his Facebook page. It is outstanding, his work. Um, I thought uh, it's completely changed my perspective of what good modelling is, if that makes sense. His work is second to none by far. Um, absolutely amazing stuff. Absolutely amazing. Okay, so now we're going to glue the rollers onto the top of the door. Uh, you get, uh, I'll try and show you them in the kit. Uh, a bit of a delay on my screen, so I can't really see what you can see, so I apologise if you can't see that. There you go. Those are the rollers. You get four in a kit. I'll just read the instructions so you can need all four. Um, don't think you do. I think you just get two spare for luck, probably because they're quite small and fiddly, so you, it's possible to break them on the way out. Hopefully that's one. Nope. So we're nearing the end of our little build here. So if anyone's got any last minute questions, suggestions, uh, queries, questions, anything like that, feel free to ask and um, I'll do my best to help you answer or to help you get an answer. I'm trying to release these rollers now. Not the easiest, they are really small. Really, really small. There's one. Got second one out. There it is, that one came out much easier. Uh, so Peter's again asking, any suggestions from trying to make the stone paper wraps appear slightly uh, embossed? Um, hmm. You could maybe try and do more, I don't know, I was going to say you could try and wash the mortar lines out a bit maybe, uh, give a bit more depth, but um, the reason what you're, what you're saying is to make it look more embossed, that's mainly the reason why, especially things like stone, I prefer um, painting and doing other methods, simply because um, I feel it looks too flat. Uh, nothing against the kit, wraps are perfectly uh, amazing for getting quick, easy, good results. Um, but they do look flat, unfortunately. Uh, there we go, just getting the glue back, which put a little lid on before it dries out. Um, but rather than using someone else's products like Will's, unfortunately, I've got no way off the top of my head of making them look more embossed. I am wanting to try and develop a way of getting laser or making laser cuts. Um, stone texture we can do brick quite easily laser cut brick texture but the issue with that is um so i'm just double, double checking where i want the rollers to go at the top there Oops. yeah we can do laser cut brick but the problem with that is it takes forever and a day to cut because there's so many lines to engrave um, yeah, it takes so many, so many lines to engrave, it takes such a long time to cut, which means we can only cut one laser cut brick kit and the time could cut 10 other kits, which means that drives the cost up, so makes it more expensive. So we don't try and, we don't really use much laser engraved brick work, but I do like it. That's just in the nose. Okay, so Roger's asking uh, who decides uh, the new kits SMS will produce. Um, to be honest with you there, Roger, um, you decide, the customers decide. We 
always like to produce what is asked of us. So if you've got an idea, let us know. Um, but if I've got an idea for a new kit, um, when I get a spare 20 minutes or half an hour or however long it would take to do that kit in design, I will just do it. And then I'll send it to Justin and then we'll add it to a folder. And then a couple of months down the line or a couple of weeks or any length of time down the line, it will then get taken out of that folder, put on the laser cutter and cut. And then the least then we'll sail. So now I'm just I'll just quickly show you the rollers that I did. They're a bit fine and fiddly. Hopefully you can see them. There they are. Now they look really nice. To be honest, I really do like them. They make a nice little fine detail. I'm adding the last two parts of the kit now, which is the um rivet strips that hold the door in place to the rollers obviously they don't in the model but they will in real life there's one i really need to change the blade on this knife it's not very sharp it's maybe a bit of a pig's ear that one so i might try you get a four on a kit which is good so you get you do get spares uh so yeah peter's asking that embossed papers do look too much like doll's houses um, the issue with wills, um, items like wills papers that have a bit embossed in their texture sheets is that the, um, how can I describe it, the way we do it, it leaves a rounded finish like that. So imagine that's the paper line, the set paper that is uh, cut on the little plastic. The bricks are rounded like that, they're not straight. But when we do it with a laser cutter, since it's all, it's done with a laser, it's really precise and accurate. The edges are actually like that. They're dead straight, dead level at 90 degrees, which is brilliant because it gives really good effects. But it does mean that um, they're more expensive, unfortunately, because they take a long time to cut. So we're nearly actually at the end of the stream now, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you for joining us today. I um, suppose this is last call for any questions, suggestions. Anything like that, anything you may wish to ask, feel free to uh, shout out and we'll have a look at it. Uh, what is asking what CAD software do we use? That is a trade secret, unfortunately. Um, all I can say is we use a good one, which I find pretty easy to use. Uh, and we can get really nice results with it as well. It's what all of our laser cut kits are designed on. So I'm just trying to uh, get the rivet strip correctly orientated while glue it in place. Bit of a job because it's so small and fine. There we go. I think I've got it. Where's my applicator? There it is. My makeshift applicator, which is a, a sprue for an ice and glass models kit. Let's make sure. It goes the right way. Edge it down a bit. Make it nice and central. And there we go. That's one of them on. Morning, Peter. Thank you for joining us today. And anytime. We'll be doing these every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Um, It'll probably be me or Justin doing my videos, but if any other member of the team fancies doing one, they're more than welcome to. So you might see Ian and Sam uh, doing one in the near future. Um, but for the time being, probably myself and Justin doing them. So this is actually, apart from the other half of the roof, which I need to do in my own time. Not quite enough glue there. Actually, try and have a bit to get a new, new glob. I don't want to put my uh, rivet down, it took me a while to get it lined up. And my cage is dried up, my glue is dried up. That's not good. Hello, Zach, thank you for joining us. There we go. Top tip if you ever get your glue dried up, just end of the knife. There you go. 
probably why my knives are all knackered, because I'm um, using for cleaning glues. Now I've got to reposition my rivet strip, which took a while. Oops, and that goes again. Make sure I line it the right way up, because there is a right and a wrong way to do it. Get my applicator. After all that, there we go. Bob of glue. Dab on my makeshift applicator. Shaky hands. That is on the wrong way. Not a very entertaining television is unfortunately. Trying to uh, position a rivet strip on a model, which you can't really see very well because I'm leaning over it to try and get it done. Okay, so we've got a helicopter landing now, chaps, so that could be a bit noisier than the jet. It's way off, I think. I'm not sure how loud it's going to be. That's it flying over now, there only is. Oh, that's no ambulance. We'll take him off then. Right, okay, so that is that. So that's it done, more or less. Within what, nearly two hours. That is one kit pretty much all done. Lovely detailing on the roof and the uh, sorry the doors there. Yeah, the detailing on the door is really really nice, especially when you know two minutes with a the knife from the bottom of the door and it just changes the kit completely, makes it look a bit more battered, a bit more used. Uh, I suppose a good thing about only doing half the roof is you can see inside. You can see how I've done it. There's, some of the roof dressers did break on me, um, which is unfortunate, but if that does if that does happen to you, uh, we will be able to arrange replacements. And of course, you've got the side access door. I need to put a strip over uh, that just to hide that. And that's where I made a mistake and got the wrap the wrong way around, or the door, there's door side the wrong way around for the wrap. So there we go. That is the KX57 kit build. I hope everyone's enjoyed this. I might actually stay around a bit longer and to answer any questions. But that is everything from me for the kit build. So if you've got any questions, feel free to ask and I'll do my best to help out. So Chris has just said, uh, the mistakes are our chance for us to learn and give great confidence. Uh, that's I am not a complete idiot. Uh, the other viewers' comments are great too. Bye for now. Okay, thanks for watching, Chris. Um, that's very true. I'm making the mistakes so you don't have to. <laughs> I suppose you could say. Brilliant. Well, I'm glad to hear it, Zach. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask. And if you've got any questions after the stream, uh, you can either send us a message on Facebook or email us at help at Um and that will get through to myself and Ian, and we'll both happily help you out with any questions you may have. Um, I'd like to point out again, if you've got any new vis uh, viewers, that these new paint sets that I've been trying out for a good couple of weeks now, I really highly recommend these. You get it's the life colour paint range. You get a huge variety of paints. Um, I probably own about 10 of these sets now. They're reasonably priced. Great quality paints for every occasion for modellers. They even do railway stuff, which is really nice. And we can stock these as well. So if anyone's interested in buying these, let us know we can get any of them for you. Um, they are brilliant kits. Uh, brilliant bits of kit. Highly recommend them. And you get six acrylic paints in the kit for each one. And they're simply superb, simply superb. I really highly recommend them. So uh, Zach is asked in how I built the roof. The roof was nice and easy, actually, Zach. You get, um, obviously this is half used because I've built half of it, but you get a strip of um, roof tiles. You simply cut these to length, as you can see, and then you um, layer them up as you go up, alternating, so to create a nice divide. 
it's tedious, it takes a while, but it's dead easy to do. Anyone can do it, so long as you have a knife and a bit of glue. It's really easy to do. Uh, so Sol's asking a rough price for the paint kit. Uh, they retail at around £17 per kit. Um, so that's six paints or six washers or six pigments, which is a powders or a mixture of the six, depending on the kit that you have. Um, really highly recommended. We can get them in. Um, I use a lot for all of my weathering and painting jobs. Um, so yeah, I don't know if we've got any more questions. I believe that will be everything. I'll just uh, stick, stick around for a couple more minutes, see if any more questions come through. Um, if you want a, a tutorial on how I painted the roof truss as well, um, yeah, it's the same effect as what I've got on these sleepers. I don't know if you can see that properly. Um, it's not the best. I can't really tell if you can see that, that really well. Um, but that's how I painted my sleepers. Here's another probably better example. Actually, no, it's not, that's the worst example. Um, I can't really show you how I painted the sleepers. Uh, it'll probably look a bit better than that. And that's probably the same method. So if anyone's interested in a, a tutorial on how I did that, I'll happily make that. Uh, so that's gone now, so thank you for joining us, Zach, and uh, thanks for joining us, Martin, and I really hope everyone's um, had a good week, enjoyed plenty of modelling. Uh... <laughs> yeah, uh, Ian's just uh, left a nice comment. Uh, the wraps are um, a bit of a pain, especially if you're not used to them like I'm not, um, but when you get your head around them and when you get used to uh, how they go together, they're, they're okay, they're absolutely fine to put down, um, but yeah, they can be <laughs> they can be a bit of a, a nightmare to use sometimes. Um, that's only because I'm not uh, used to them. Anyone like uh, my colleague Ian, um, he uses wraps extensively. He's built pretty much a whole model railway, or well, a couple of model railways from using that, um, using uh, wraps. Um, and he's, he's a dab hand at them, he's amazing at doing them. But I've only done them a couple of times, so therefore I'm not as good at using them. It's not of anything. It comes with practice. It comes with um, experience. The more you practice, the better you get at it. With wraps as well, they're quite cheap, relatively cheap, um, and you get quick results rather than spending ages and ages and ages faffing around with paints. Um, like that signal box I showed earlier, I did that with paint. Um, with Dan Everson's method, this probably took me about a good couple of nights to do, and it still wasn't done yet. I've still got lots and lots and lots to do on it, which is just, but if I did it with a wrap, it would be done by now and have a nice finish. So it all depends what you want. If you want a nice, realistic finish quickly, or if you want a customised finish quickly, that's what I would say is the difference between the two um, methods, painting and wrapping. Um, yeah, any more questions? Thanks for joining us, Wendy, anytime. And, uh, I hope everyone's having a good week so far. Hopefully lockdown uh, is nearing the end, I'd like to think. We've all got family members who want to go and see. Um, and uh, obviously exhibitions to go back to and uh, real railways, preserve lines to go and see. That we're all missing, um, but hopefully soon we'll be able to. Uh... Dinmore's asking, would you spray the paper wrap um, with spray varnish? Um, You'd have to be careful on that one. The wraps, although they are printed on high quality paper, they are still paper. Um, so I suppose you'd have to be using a sparing amount so you won't don't saturate the wrap at all. And if you do saturate it, you could risk ruining it. But then again, they're not cheap, they're not expensive. Um, in fact, if you actually sign up to our club, which is railwaymodelers.com, uh, for the price of £6 per month, um, which you can cancel at any time, by the way, um you can get unlimited access to all of our or most of our texture sheets um so that means if you did um want a large project and you wanted a, num a number of wraps and you had a printer at home you can actually print off as many as you want that way um it's not just wraps you offer there as well we do a lot of um buildings as well with texture sheets um, that you print off at home um they are quite nifty again that's more ian's thing um, and I don't have much to do with the club, but they are really, really useful sometimes for large scale folks like walls, 
especially when you can download a pretty much unlimited amount, which is just six pounds per month. Um, okay, so very say you can spray wraps with uh, artist pastel uh, fixative. Yeah, you probably could, but I would just be a bit cautious with them just to make sure that you don't over saturate the wrap. Um, and that's the same with any material, to be honest. Um, uh, this sort of stuff, which I believe is 0.4 of a mil um, laser board, it's pretty thin, it's pretty papery. Um, it's still cardboard, it's still wood, so it's still got some uh, texture to it. Um, but if you paint it too much, too heavy with acrylic paints, and you don't prime it with anything first, and you can actually risk uh, warping it, um, which is where the paint or the water in the paint soaks into the um, the material and causes it to um, expand, swell up, and fray, um, which ruins which ruins it, unfortunately. Um, so if you do paint anything like your uh, roof tiles, either use a very very sparing amount of paint, or um, varnish uh, prime them first, and I'll just. Apologise about the noise a second, but I just would like to show you this. Uh, there we go. This is another paint set from Life Colour, which I highly recommend. Hopefully you can see that. It's a stone set of paints. And there you get six nice stone coloured paints, and I'll be using them to paint the roof and to give a nice varied effect. Um, yeah, that's highly recommend that. It's a beautiful bit of kit. Again, it's something we can order in. Uh, I mean, just looking at the side, you've got lots of different variants. So you've got one for dust, even one for lichen and moss, and then one for stains, that sort of thing. You can get leather, uh, white wood. Um, it's going to be said real wood then, <laughs> but your more genuine uh, tree wood, dark colours of wood. Um, there's a huge variety in their range, huge, huge variety. So it's highly recommended. Retail about £17 each, and we can get them in if you so wish. So a few people go now, down to 94 people in the stream. Um, I can't think of anything more to say, to be honest. So unless anyone's got um, any pressing questions they'd like to ask, I'll just stick around for a couple more minutes to see if we're going to get any questions in. If not, feel free to ask us on Facebook through our uh, Facebook group, which is rowingmodelers.com. Um, loads and loads of uh, really, really able and capable modelers and helpful people on there, um, ready to give numerous unlimited amounts of advice. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Any questions, feel free to ask, and you'll be inundated with replies. Um, I'll just show you the kit again. Walking around with this little kit. It's a lovely little kit. Dead sheets for £7.49, I believe it is. And you get quite a lot for that kit. What I think you get more, though, is experience. For a cheap £7 kit, you can have experience in kit bashing with um, altering the door. You can get experience with painting interior details with the wooden trusses. Obviously, you meant to have the uh, horizontal beams going across, but I omitted those for um, sake of sanity. You can have experience with wraps. You can get experience with uh, the fine details like rivet strips and then adding the um, roof tiles. You can get all that in one kit for seven pounds, which I think is, A, you get an amazing kit for the price, but you also get an amazing amount of experience for the price as well. You get a nice level of detail, level of skills that you can develop from one kit. Okay, so I'm not seeing any more questions. Uh, Roger's asking, how do I watch later? Um, once I've ended the stream, it should be uploaded to uh, Facebook, uh, sorry, to YouTube and to Facebook, actually. Um, Mr. Mr. Um, 04 is saying, I can't find many items on your website. You only get 15 pop up. Um, if that is scalemodelscenery.co.uk, um, we're actually trialing a new search engine at the moment. Um, and I'm not sure how specific it requires you to be. Um, it may be that you have to um, be really quite accurate of what you want. We are trying to improve it, but um, if you search for general terms like uh, coins or bench or uh, shed or anything like that, you should get everything which is appropriate to that. And then, of course, you can view all items, and then you'll get a list of every item we do, um, either laser cut or 3D printers. And there's a, a good couple of hundred on there, so there's plenty to be having a trawl through. Uh, if it is rowermodelers.com you're referring to, um, 
a search engine on that is not brilliant, I will admit. Um, but you do get quite a number of results if you search for the more general items like um, ah, so Mr. Mr. is saying that um, he's clicking on uh, 172 scale. Um, the reason why you're not getting many pop up then is because we don't do an overly massive amount in 1 to 70 seconds. Um, if you're wanting double O gauge products, you need to look at 176 because um, that is double O gauge. 170 seconds is the aircraft stuff. Um, so airfix kits normally and tanks and that sort of thing. Uh, we do a couple of items like fences, um, the odd bits and bobs, but the 99% of all of our kits are in 170 seconds. Um, so if you click on 170 seconds, you'll be able to view all of our 170 second kits. Don't worry, we, we've all made that mistake before. I am um, a bugger for it as well. I just see the uh, the seven and I think that's double O gauge, um, but more than usually it's not. <laughs> so make sure you're on 176 and then you should be, be able to view all of our kits. Yeah, our search engine is pretty good. I'm going well soon. We are trying to get a new one, which should make it a bit smoother, a bit better, and get more variety of results um, to try and cater for everyone's needs. Um, but like I say, it is just a trial at the moment. Um, so it could go either way with that one. And there are, it always amazes me how some websites aren't up to it, I do think. Um, I think in this day and age, if you don't have a good website, and I'm going to have an advanced website, which is easy to navigate, easy to use, and you can view the products you want to view in a couple of clicks, then you need to really look into that and really get that sorted. It's surprising me how many websites are quite lacking, and how many businesses are quite lacking in that department. I do think a website is the um, it's the modern day equivalent of a, a front of your, of your shop, really. It's, 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 yeah. If your shop doesn't look nice and you haven't got um, a nice inviting shop and it's easy to use, then what's the point to be honest so we always do try and give our website the best possible service try and make it as easy for you to use as possible i will say as well you can also place your orders on uh, over the telephone uh, you can call myself and ian um monday to friday nine till five on 01530 456 952 and we'll be able to take any questions uh, over the telephone there and any orders uh, alternatively, you can purchase our items on eBay and Amazon um, if that is easier for you. And you can also email us help at scalemodelscenery.co.uk if you've got any questions. And then myself, Ian, and Justin would be more than happy to help anyone out with any question. Like I say, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Um, so my throat's going a bit now. Um, not a drink for a couple of hours. Lots and lots of talking. Right, I think I'm going to end it there. I know I keep saying this, but I will just uh, morangi. Oh, is that the uh, the whiskey? Morangi, more morangi. <laughs> All we need to know is that it's nice. <laughs> it's very nice. <laughs> Any chance of doing the loading doors uh, model kit for warehouses? Uh, is that a modern style you're referring to, Gary? Um, Alex. 318, I believe it is, um, which is the, the style of door you see a lot uh, when you travel on the motorway and you pass as the warehouses and that sort of thing. Um, yep, that's a really dead easy, that's a dead easy kit to do. It's a couple of um, core MDF pieces and a couple of wraps, dead easy to make. Um, I think Ian's done again a couple of walkthroughs on the rarermodelers.com club. Um, again, you don't have to be a paid member to view them, anyone can go online and view them. But uh, that, that's a dead easy kit to do. So I'll, I'll put that to Justin. I'll see if he wants to do that next week or see if I can do it next week. Um, but yeah, what I'll also do is I will paint up this kit. I'll finish the kit off. Um, I don't know if anyone, anyone missed it earlier. This is the paint I'll be using, which is a Citadel. Make that of what you will paint. <laughs> no idea how to pronounce that. Um, but it's a lovely shade of blue, especially for my area, which is Northeastern Railway. Uh, Morangi, Morangi, Morangi. That's a whiskey. I'm not too sure how you pronounce that, but it's nice. It won't be there for very long. It's a lovely bottle. Um, right. I should probably end it there. I've been waffling on for two hours and nine minutes and 53 seconds now, which is plenty, plenty, plenty long enough. Justin probably 
shouting at his phone telling me to get back to work rather than storming. <laughs> but um, like I say, anyone's got any more questions, feel free to ask us either through Facebook, through our Facebook club, uh, which is roamodelers.com or email us help at scenery.co.uk and we'll all chip in, help out, get as many questions answered as possible. Um, but thank you everyone for joining us. Um, I do appreciate everyone watching, listening, um, getting fed up with me. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'll uh, get Justin to have a look at the LX318 in the, ne the next couple of weeks. It's a dead simple kit to do, so we might do it quickly at the end after a, a beefier one. I'm not sure which. Well, now I've got you all, I will see if there's any interest in this. Would we like to see, maybe not as a live stream like this, because it'll probably take me about five hours, but would we like to see a video on building the new station platform kit that we've done? This one's based off Nuts Bay, um, on the Whitby to Scarborough Railway. Um, it's a personal item for my model railway, but if, if anyone's interested in a video on how to make that, paint that, whether it install it, etc., I'll be more than happy to do that. It's a lovely kit. Very, it's relatively small, but it's lovely, um, finely detailed, and it will take forever and a day to build. So I'll have to do that as a video rather than a live stream. But if the demand is there, I'll happily do that for everyone. People are still trying. <laughs> Everyone's trying to uh, help me pronounce my uh, my whiskey bottle of choice at the moment. Um, I'll ask Ian later. Ian loves his whiskey, um, and he's. Uh, He's not, he's not a Scottish freak, he's a freak from Scotland, but he is um, a Scottish freak in the sense that he is obsessed with the place in the same way. Justin's obsessed with Cornwall, and I'm obsessed with Whitby. Um, that's, his, that's, his, that's his home, really, even though he's from Doncaster. His home's really in Scotland. So I'll ask Ian how he pronounces the, the, uh, the whiskey of choice over there in the background. Um, right, I'm going to have to end it there, because I really need a wee, and I need a drink, to be honest. But thank you everyone for watching. Hope everyone has a good week, and I will see you all later, hopefully next week, or Justin will. Um, but it's been a pleasure as always, um, and thank you for putting up with me for the past two hours and 15 minutes, which is um, an amazing time. Uh, really, really do enjoy doing these live streams for everyone. So if anyone's got any questions, feel free to ask, and all the team will be happy to help. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Um, Hopefully everyone's enjoyed the video, um, and any, any questions feel free to ask. So cheers, everyone. <laughs> Sorry, Robert, you uh, joined the party a bit late. Then about to end it, but if anyone wants to watch this back, you can do so through um, YouTube and Facebook after this has ended. It should be uploaded there. So thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Happy modelling, and keep on shooting. Bye for now. <laughs>